Well, good morning, good afternoon, good night, depending on time zone, time of day, etc. I thank you for coming along as we take hop on a bus and take a tour through the Gospel of Matthew. Our tour through the Gospel of Matthew finds us in this reading in Matthew chapter 26 and verses 20 to 23. I am reading from the Jerusalem Bible. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 20. When evening came, he was at the table with his twelve disciples. And while they were eating, he said, I tell you solemnly, one of you is going to betray me. They were greatly distressed and started asking him in turn, Not I, Lord, surely. They answer, he answered, Someone who has dipped his hand into the dish with me will betray me. In life, some of the most devastating things are those that come completely out of the blue. They catch us flat-footed. We were not prepared for them, and they happen. I'm at the point in life where both of my parents have died. Their death was difficult as all deaths of parents are. But in neither case was the death of the parent a shock. My parents were both well into their 80s and in declining health at the time of their death. The death of both was in that sense anticipated. The person who has been laid off from a factory where the company has gone through bankruptcy proceedings and downsizing is shocked, but not surprised. A person who has lived with a spouse with a history of infidelity is shocked, but not surprised when that person announces that he is moving in with his girlfriend. What we are saying in all of, is that in all of these events, that they have an impact on us. But there is a sense in which we could see them coming. We had a forewarning of their coming. In life, there are times when things come and we had no idea it was going to be so. Look at the above events and imagine the impact changes, how the impact changes if we had no forewarning. If, for example, I have been planning a major trip with my parents, and we have been in planning for this for a year or two, and everything was good to go, no reason to believe it was not to be, imagine what a death of a parent would mean at that point. Or imagine that person whose company is you know, where he's going, getting laid off. If that person had just signed the mortgage papers to purchase a house, imagine how that would then hit that person. Or we could take that married couple. Imagine if they were already in the planning stages of a cruise to celebrate a milestone anniversary when out of the blue, the one spouse walks out of the relationship. You see, what I'm saying is, that there are events which we have an inkling for. Doesn't make them easy. And then there are events where, boom, like that. They smack us hard because we were not prepared or ready. The impact is far worse for you are in no way prepared for what followed. To me, that is the way to understand what is going on in our passage. The apostles had not seen the signs of betrayal. They were caught completely unprepared for what Jesus said. There is also another category we must deal with in this discussion, discussion of shocking events. The disciples were not only caught off guard, but the reality is that they were being naive. Now, this is a tough point to deal with, but there are times when people make a bad situation worse for they have not seen things for what they are. Let's go back to the death of your parents. Often the most difficult death when it comes to your parents is the first one. And there's a reason for that is because our parents have been there ever since we've been around and we expect our parents to be there forever. So the death of the first parent is often the most difficult to deal with in the sense that it is the realization that our parents are not going to be with us. And there's that 
sense of naivety, you know, that is broken. We have been so used to them being there and being a part of our life. And often in most people, they are a huge part of our life. There's that naivety. But there's a naivety of that person who thinks that their job at that factory is going to be there for life and that they can continue to show up at work forever and ever. And that person can be completely naive and fail to see that the world moves on. The economics change, technology changes, and there is no guarantee in our modern world that any factory will be there forever. Or take that spouse who has operated in a bubble for years where there's always been those signs, those, you know, text messages on the computer which you cannot access or emails on the computer you can't access, or the text messages that you constantly see being deleted on the, your spouse's phone, or the constant fact that this person is coming home very late at night or gone on the weekend and stuff like this. There is that sort of naivety where the signs were always there, but the person chose not to see them. The disciples were naive. They were first and foremost naive about themselves. They were naive as to who Jesus was. They were naive as to what the religious leaders were really like. And the question we have to ask, did they have to be that naive? And the answer I would say to you is no. There is a sense in which they chose to be naive. You see, there is a danger where we can create a world of naivety because that creates a little bubble where we feel safe, secure, and the world does not impact us. We understand that when people first come to Christ that they do not have the ability to grasp what they have got themselves into. Now, this is okay. It is not okay when that attitude and mindset is there 10 and 20 years later. A destructive influence in the church are naive Christians. People who could and should know better and do not. People are content where they are because they have, as it were, created a little bubble of naivety. Naivety about God, naivety about evil, naivety about where their church is, naivety about what they are before God. You see, if they can create that naivety, well, all is well. There's a comfort in that bubble. But that is not Christianity, and it's not real faith. Naive Christians cannot be trusted. Naive Christians cannot be depended on. Look at Jesus. He had 12 people. He goes into the Garden of Gethsemane, and they think it's kindergarten once again, and nap time. Jesus is arrested, and what happens? They head for the hills. They cannot be trusted. Jesus did not call us to be naive as to who we are who he is, and what the world that we are in is like. We should not be shocked at the evil in our world and what it can do. The call to be Christian is not a call to be naive.